Let's bring in our political insiders now. You'll find them on Twitter at FN Insiders. John LeBoutlier, former Republican congressman for New York. Pat Cadell, a former pollster for President Jimmy Carter and Fox News contributor. And Doug Schoen, former pollster for Bill Clinton and Fox News contributor as well. Gentlemen, good to have you here tonight. Good to hear. Uh, and timely, too, because of these comments from sure. Governor Romney. So, Doug, I ask you first. Sure. Uh, he left out Senator Ted Cruz. Why? Well. Ted Cruz represents a different strand of Republican thinking than Mitt Romney, but Ted Cruz has also, despite the controversy he generated, moved close to the top of the Republican presidential trial heats, indicating a couple of things. First, the party's divided. Two, there's no clear front runner. And three, Mitt Romney, who lost the race he probably could have won, is really, I think, somewhat out of step with what's going on. You know, um, we want to hear now from the governor on who he actually would pick from his party to run and his own comments about Senator Cruz. Let's watch that. Paul Ryan, uh, Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio. I mean, there's a long list of very capable people, but Chris Christie stands out as one of the very strongest lights of the Republican Party. Does Ted Cruz stand out to you as a potential light of the Republican Party? Uh, look, I'm not going to disqualify anybody, but I, uh, I, I think I've indicated some of the names I think are, are most effective in, in becoming elected, and, and uh, uh, we'll see where it goes. John, what role does Senator Ted Cruz play in the Republican Party right well, now? Well, he is the uh, voice of the anger against the establishment of both parties, against Washington, D.C., against Obamacare. I have to say, the verb that was used there, who is Mitt Romney to disqualify anybody for anything? Look, he ran the worst campaign, look, Pat, right? The worst. Look, this is unbelievable. We care, but I thought NBC must have had a strategy meeting on how to help Obama. Let's bring up the man and remind people <laughs> wow. who you could have had as president. This man was the most incompetent presidential candidate for the chance to be elected president, running the worst campaign in history, and he's going to tell people what to do. Do the exact opposite of what he says. Well, Unbelievable to yeah, me. A year, ago, waste a a year ago, the day after tomorrow, he lost. And the Republican Party was a mess, right? Still is a mess, John. A year it's later, sad. it's you, more of a mess. You blame one person for that? No, but he is he symbolic of it. He's the establishment wing of the Republican Party, and he doesn't get it. You know, it's interesting. I'm going to share now Nancy B. Krupp on my Twitter page because before we sure. went to break, I asked people to weigh in on this. She says, anyone who leaves Ted Cruz off the list is off my list for anything. What's the problem with hard work and supporting the Constitution? The public's perception of him is that he's a fighter. That's exactly right. And the government shutdown, which was unpopular and has hurt the Republican Party, inside the Republican Party, the primary voters, the activists, love Ted Cruz, which is a sign of what John and Pat were saying, the divisions which have really ripped the Republican Party asunder. Well, and I want to bring Pat into this. You really can't get away from Ted Cruz when you consider the millions of Americans who might love to see his name on a presidential ballot. Can we take a look? I'm going to ask my team to put up some numbers here. This is a poll that was taken recently by the Wall Street Journal, and it shows how people identify and what party they would consider voting for in 2016. The numbers there are pretty close between Democrat and Republican, but the one that really stands out is that 30 percent, nearly a third of American surveys said, oh, you know what, we'll go with an independent or a third party. In every poll that I have seen, including some work I've done recently, the number of people either picking an independent or saying they want someone other than the parties they're getting is higher than we've ever seen. It's consistent. And it reflects the frustration. First, the Republicans and the, what happened with the shutdown. Now, this latest thing with Obamacare, where Obama is morphing into, I can't decide what he's morphing into, George H.W. Bush or worse, which is Richard no Nixon? Richard Nixon. Well, that's the, where he really is at. But this idea of the corruption corruption and lying to the American people is it's just appalling to voters and the Democrat our party Doug our party Democrat what are they doing they're getting up saying oh by the way don't look at what we did we don't care anything to win and that's what people are going who represents us well, we, we aren't we watching Harris I think this is significant we're watching we watched the Republican Party self-immolate with the shutdown and those numbers you just put on they're third now behind independence for who people would vote for. It's close. They, they, but, but they're third. Now we're watching the Democrats self-immolate. We're watching both major parties in this mm -hmm. fall both kill themselves. So who can stand up, Doug? Because, I mean, you heard Pat just annihilating your own party, your Democrat yes. party there. You didn't interrupt him. So <laughs> No, he's right. 
So Here's, who can move forward now, going looking Here's in advance? Thing. Right now, as we sit here, Harris, the high numbers for independents that you were citing are emblematic of the fact that there really is no one on the scene who is providing real leadership. You not one name comes to I, mind. I, you, I, you know, I could say somebody like a Chris Christie, but here's the real problem. President Obama's strategy is to double down with attacks on the Republicans, and as Pat and John have said, to shade the truth or just ignore the truth. The Republicans are just attack, no agenda. Bottom line, the American people, incredibly angry. Let's talk presidential credibility here if we can, because Pat, you mentioned before you were kind of comparing President Obama and hinting at his disapproval rating, I believe. So let's yes. put those numbers up on the screen. Uh, this is a very recent poll that was taken in just the last week or so. Uh, and what it shows is that that disapproval number has ticked up above 50 percent now and continues to go north. Well, its approval rating is the lowest in the Wall Street Journal poll. And we see people looking at that they've ever measured it ties with the lowest. But let me tell you something. I was the youngest person on Richard Nixon's enemies list. Watching this president dissemble to the American people, whether it is on whether it's on Benghazi, whether it's on health care, getting up and telling people, knowing you were lying, which we now know from the reports, that they knew what they were doing. They couldn't have won the election without it. They couldn't have lying passed on health care. Health care. But everything, the red line, I don't know anything. I know nothing. I'm not, it's the sergeant's old defense. But I want to tell you, the corruption here is as great as it was under Richard I Nixon. I think it's been, I think what Pat is talking about is this line about if you like your insurance, you can keep your insurance. You think that's really been damaging? Oh, I think it's a turning oh. point in How his presidency. How sticky is the perception problem, it's like though, a no new tax for Democrats, for this president, I should say, among his own party? Because bad. they are going to be bad. facing election, yep. re-election, some There's, of them, let, let me, a year from now. Let me, How sticky let is me this problem? Let me speak to this as a Democrat. Everybody stayed together until recently on health care. There's been breakaway senators, as we talked about last week, on delaying the individual mandate, delaying the penalty. Now, when the White House has acknowledged they didn't tell the truth, you're going to see Democrats increasingly moving away from a president who for five years, five and a half years, has had unquestioned what, loyalty. What amazes me is the what some people who are willing, Lemmings willing to go off the cliff with him on this, the, like, even Bill Bill Maher, who's said it, I thought, as much as I have my problem with Bill Maher, said it on his show this weekend to Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the chairman of the Democratic Party, while she was making up this fantasy. He said, you know, I thought President Obama was honest. He's not, and neither are you. He just tore her apart. The problem for the Democrats are who's going to go off the cliff with this and who is going to start caring about their own survival. All right, you mentioned Benghazi. There's been news made on that this weekend. We'll get into that after the commercial break. A new push for answers in the deadly Benghazi terror attack. A top senator is now calling for a witness who recently shared his story to testify before Congress. As often is the case when someone comes forward with information like this, a lot of discussion about whether his entire story is true. In any regard, though, widespread agreement that it's a good idea to hear all we can about that night. No one said that clearer today than Senator Lindsey Graham. I don't think it's over the top for us to be able to talk to the survivors. They were talked to by the Accountability Review Board. The State Department picked a team to look into what happened at Benghazi. They interviewed these survivors to tell us, as a member of Congress who has to explain to the families, are they being straight and honest with you from the Obama administration? It's not too over the top. Our political insiders are back. John Laboutlier, Pat Cadell, and Doug Schoen. Pat, I'm going to start with you. Benghazi, still an issue that Americans say they want to hear about. You know what? The Americans really care about this. The people who have not have been the administration and the, and, the, and the mainstream media. Four dead Americans, as you pointed out, not just the ambassador. But this is outrageous. What Lindsey Graham said this morning, and I have my problems with him, but I want to tell you, he was right. I don't care about the British guy. No one has talked to any of the American survivors. The FBI has covered this up. This is exactly what Nixon did with Watergate. This administration has done that. And get this, 60% of Americans, including half of the Democrats, believe that the president is hiding things about, about this crisis. And over 62% in the poll that I was involved in said they want, we need a special committee. And that brings us to the fact that John Boehner has been in the tank not doing standing up for America either. No, no, the we have 177 Republican House members signed on for a select committee, for a 90-day committee to investigate this whole thing. 
Okay. There are three dozen CIA personnel that were there that night at Benghazi. Every one of them has been forced to sign a non-disclosure agreement where they're not allowed to talk to Congress. That smacks of it's cover It's Nixonian. Up. It's, it yeah. is Nixonian, and it's a moral this outrage. This has lit up Twitter. And, you know, for those in the mainstream media who often will look at social media to kind of get a gauge on whether people are interested, they'll look at polling, so on and so forth. I think it takes more than that. I think you got to drill down and actually look at the trend. And this seems to be a trend right now. Carla Ferngenes, and Carla, forgive me if I didn't get your last name right, has tweeted to me, someone should be made accountable for the inaccurate information uh, put out about Benghazi. You know, this is an opportunity, Doug. It is. For a Democrat. It doesn't have to be Republican. It doesn't have to be the opposition party. For a Democrat who might be facing re-election next fall right. to step up and say, okay, let's, let's move beyond this point. Let's find out who told the public what that wasn't yeah. true and move forward. Harris, you put your finger on it in the earlier segment. The Democrats have stayed in lockstep with the president on virtually everything all through his term. This is an opportunity that the president has been tamping down for the Democrats to try to seek answers. He's going to do that because of what Pat said, which is Watergate. Water he doesn't want the floodgates open. You know, Bottom line, he's scared to death. And in of this. Watergate, let me say something. You know, there were brave Republicans who stood up to Richard Nixon and stood up for the country first. I am appalled in my party that no one will put the country before politics. N neither, you know, I talk about we have the corrupt party and the stupid party, and, and, the, and the Benghazi is the perfect well, example. Let me, let me of it. ask you this question. On the Republican side, we had 80 Tea Party mm -hmm. congressmen who shut the government down. Boehner listened to them. Right. 177 want this committee, and he doesn't listen to them. Because Why? they Why? got him by the they, the, they have something on Boehner, and they're using it. It's the only conclusion you can come I to. Would well, urge, we don't know that urge, for sure, Pat. I would I'm urge, saying it's the only I just lead you to one conclusion. They must have something on him that he will not stand Harris, up and stand John, I would up urge the tonight your viewership, call, tweet, write their Republican Congress people and tell them, we aren't going to vote for you next year unless you get this select committee up and running right away. Get it or get him out. One yeah. of the All two. right, Carolina girl, uh, Lisa, she says, uh, she's saying that Republicans and Democrats right now need to get behind Lindsey Graham and push for answers. That's it. We need bipartisanship to get answers. This isn't about politics, Harris. It's about four courageous men who lost their and lives. Perhaps that's part of the messaging that has been missed exactly. as part of this. Exactly. Uh, right. By the way, right. you realize Harris. the Republicans run the House, right? They've got all these committees supposedly investigating Benghazi. They're getting nowhere. It's CNN, liberal CNN, and 60 Minutes who've done more, and Fox, of course, to uncover stuff than the, with subpoena power for standing committees of the House. They're yeah, getting if nowhere. If you hadn't said Fox, I was going to have to cut your mic. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. You just, <laughs> but, you know, you have look, to ask in But look, in the in beginning, country, Harris, it was only Fox that asked the questions that had to be asked. Yeah, and we were the lone line, voice in the We forest. were the lone voice for a long time. But you raised an important point. What's missing in the entire debate now is bipartisanship, solutions on health care, positive answers, when putting the country first. Right. Democrat put the country first and put truth before their political party. That's real, all. Real quickly, uh, trending right now too, uh, if you can say something is trending on your own Twitter page, uh, a lot of people are talking about Senator Ted Cruz. We talked about his possible role in the Republican Party. And there's a question Kara Wolf wants to know. Was he born in this country? Would that, if he was not, preclude him he, from running for he president? He was born in Canada of okay. a, an American mother and a non-American father, most legal experts think that he can legally run for president. Why? Because the statement in the Constitution is natural born American. If you came out of an American mother, they think that qualifies him as a natural born. It, maybe it certainly could, didn't work. Maybe we reverse. could rephrase that if you were born to right. <laughs> an yeah. American mother. But whatever, we got your point. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you so thank much. You, uh, Twitter is alive right now, and I'm also looking at your page, too. I'm kind of toggling back and forth here. A lot of comments tonight on Benghazi. Pat, I'll be interested to see, as the conversation goes forward, how much bipartisan support Senator Lindsey Graham gets. We will see. Thank you. Don't hold your breath. All yeah. right. Thank Thanks. you very Thank much. You. Thank you.